I swear I have devised a recipe for oven fries so crunchy you will think they were deep fried. Want proof? And unlike quote-unquote real fries, these are easy and clean to make in your house. Not quick, but easy and clean. How do you get them so crunchy? Well, you gotta think like a Brit. Hey, real quick, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, which I am using to build and host my new website. Squarespace is a one-stop shop for my business, and it could be for yours too. Go to squarespace.com slash Ragusea, enter the offer code Ragusea, and you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, I think this recipe could work with all kinds of potatoes, but today I'm using large russet potatoes, one per person. And I'm peeling them just to maximize the starchy surface area that will get crispy, but you really don't have to peel them if you don't want to. Okay, now cut these into whatever fry shape you want. If you're obsessed with uniformity, if you want them all like a row of soldiers, feel free to waste the curvy outer pieces. Personally, I'm a big fan of heterogeneity in food, but I am trying to make sure that each fry is of roughly equal thickness, even when they're not all the same shape. Even girth equals even cooking time. Speaking of girth, you might be thinking, whoa, those are huge fries. Yeah, but no, they will shrink by about half over the course of cooking. And they'll still be on the big side, like steak fries, but they'll need to be thick, otherwise they'll break apart with this cooking method. If you really want to make your life easy, cut your potatoes into wedges, easy to cut and super sturdy throughout the cooking. Into a big saucepan they go. And yeah, this is a lot of fries. One of the advantages of this recipe over conventional fries is you can cook enough of them for like four people all in one batch and have them all be done at exactly the same time. Real fries you have to do in small batches unless you have a giant commercial deep fryer in your house, which I don't. Whoops, forgot one. Yes, oven fries are not technically fries. They're roast potatoes. And who makes the best roast potatoes? The Brits. What's their secret? They boil them first. That's just enough water to cover everything, and I'm putting it on high heat. The lid just helps them boil quicker. This step has the effect of making the pieces fluffy. It'll make the interior of the finished fry all fluffy, and it will create a fluffy, starchy exterior that goes incredibly crispy when roasted in fat for a long time. Great British roasties have an exterior like glass. You basically boil these until you're terrified they're going to fall apart, which is a particular danger with the long, thin shape we're working with. See how it's looking bendy? That scares me, and it should. As Jamie Oliver once said, the secret is to boil them as long as you dare. I did about eight minutes. All right, these are too delicate to just dump into a colander. Luckily, the better option is my preferred method for draining anything, which is to just open up a little gap between the pot and the lid and let the water fall out. Fries are intact, and there's no colander to wash. Here is my big roasting tray. I do my Thanksgiving turkey in this. You could use a baking sheet instead. Anything big enough to hold all of the fries more or less in one layer. Just gently dumping the fries in. Some of them are gonna break, and that's just fine. Those will be extra crispy bits. Now, I use olive oil because it tastes good, but if you want a more traditional fry flavor, use a neutral oil, like peanut oil. I'm pouring in a whole lot. They don't need to be swimming in oil, but they do need to be very well coated. And putting the oil onto the potatoes instead of into the pan first really helps get all the sides coated. Now, keeping in mind these are very delicate at this stage, give them a shake. We're just getting the pieces covered in oil and getting them all onto one layer in the tray. See that fluffy, beat-up surface on the fry? That is the magic. That's what's going to go incredibly crisp in a 450 Fahrenheit oven. Here they are after about 45 minutes. I'm just going to flip around the bigger pieces, make sure nothing is sticking. If they're looking a little dry, I'll add some more oil. No, I don't think these are any less caloric than deep-fried fries. Then just give them another shake. They'll be quite a bit more rigid at this stage, so you can be aggressive. Back in the oven they go until they're ready, which for me was another 45 minutes. Gonna depend on your oven and how you cut your potatoes. You might be thinking, good lord, this is a long time. Well, yeah, but it's mostly unattended time, unlike real fries, which require your constant love and attention. And this is time in which we can be, you know, making the rest of the meal, because nobody just eats a plate of fries, unless you're a Canadian and you're making poutine. That's an idea for a video. <laughs> You want to be conservative. I cooked this batch a hair too long. The super brown bits tasted a little bit burned. If you're worried that the fries don't feel totally crunchy and rigid yet, be aware that they will firm up a lot as soon as they cool down a little bit. Now, how do you drain and season these? It's easy. I'll show you in a sec. 
Hey, thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this recipe. Squarespace is an all-in-one toolkit for building and running a professional online presence, which I need. And if you've got, say, a food-related business, they've got beautiful templates just waiting for you. For example, you can drop an open table block onto any page and take reservations right there on your site. I'm gonna start with something simpler built around a frame from my lasagna video. The great thing is that Squarespace has a built-in image editor. Yeah, you generally wanna up the contrast, especially for mobile screens. That's something you figure out real quick as a YouTuber. Then you just enter in your info and you're off. I'm gonna work on this a bit and show you where I'm at in a couple of weeks. But you can get started on yours for free right now at squarespace.com. And when you're ready to publish your site or buy a domain, go to squarespace.com slash Ragusia and enter the offer code Ragusia. You're gonna save 10%. Link is in the description. Okay, here's the draining method that I got from Anthony Bourdain's book, Rest His Soul. Towel goes in a big bowl. Dump the fries in, the towel absorbs the excess oil, then whip the towel out. Get back in there, you. A bunch of coarse salt goes in, and since we're already being non-traditional, let's go crazy. Little shake of garlic powder, a few grinds of pepper, chopped cilantro, then grate in a bunch of Parmesan and toss. You can hear they've got that glassy British roast potato exterior. And just think, there's no giant pot of hot oil to clean up after dinner, stinking up the house while we eat. And here's another bonus. These stay hot and crunchy for a surprisingly long time. Like, you've got a good 20-minute window to get the rest of your meal done and on the table. If you really want to have fries at home, I think this recipe is the way to go.